So for the select books function, let's go ahead and get ready for that. So we're gonna create a new variable. We'll just call this the rows and we'll call get selected rows. Now from here, what we're going to do is, uh, well, first thing we need to make sure we have some selected rows. So we're gonna call the get length. That function will tell us if we have any rows that we're working with. If that's greater than zero, then we're all good. Uh, if it's not, then what we need to do is tell someone that, uh, well, you need to make a selection. Okay, but if we do have some rows, what we wanna do is loop through each one of those rows, pull out the ID of the record that we're working with, and then send that back to the server. So let's create a for loop. And what we're looking at is the rows length. And so we want to make sure i is less than rows.getLength. Increment it with each one. Okay, so then what we'll do within here is fill up our selected IDs array with the IDs that we're looking for. So selected IDs. So we'll say rows dot get item. Now once we have the specific row we're looking for, we need to look at the cell that we're interested in. So we're going to go to get cell and we're going to pass in that ID index. And then from there we can do a get text. So if you remember from the grid, the first column after the row numbering was the primary key value or the ID. So that's what this does. We're gonna go to the specific row, go to the cell that we're looking for, in this case, the ID, and then get the text. So once we have that, that's added into our array here. And once we have all of those items, we can call page methods dot select book. This is the proxy that was created for us here. Pass in the selected IDs. And when things go right, we'll call a function called on success. If things go wrong, we'll call a function called on fail. So let's flush out those functions really quickly. So we have a function on success. Now the response object is passed to us by default. We're not going to use it in this case. What we want to do is basically clear out the selected IDs. So we're going to be calling a, a function called clear selected IDs. And the reason is, I'm not just implementing it here, is because we're going to be using that same logic uh, somewhere else in a moment. So we'll go ahead and, and, and fill out that function here in just a minute, but then we'll say our on fail is... Now, if you build your applications correctly, you'll be doing all of your exception management on the server. So if something went wrong on the database, you should catch that exception, publish it, by putting it in uh, the database or sending an email or doing something with it. If it comes back to where this has failed, then this is more of the, it couldn't connect to the server right, the request failed or something like that. So we're just gonna tell people to try again. So I'm kind of punting on the idea of what to happen if something goes wrong. Um, there's a host of other things that you can do, but for right now, that's what we're going to do for the on fail. So for the success on clear selected IDs, we need to have this function and we'll clear selected IDs. And what we're simply going to do here is take our selected IDs and that is spelled wrong. Let's go ahead and fix that. So our selected IDs will equal a new array. That way we have a, a fresh version of that array and um, we're keeping everything in sync as necessary. So let's go ahead and try this out. We should have a breakpoint on our code behind and let's run it. So now I can select right here ID number nine and also ID number two. And if I go to submit, um, we get a lovely error. Let's find out what I did wrong here. I did select books back here and I did select a book right there. That one little S. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, so let's select uh, ID number eight and ID number three. 
So now when we have it passed back here, you can see here's our array and we have eight and number three. So that's good. We were able to get into the selection and pull out from the rows that were selected uh, the, the information that we needed. So now all we need to do is implement the clear and select all buttons. And those are actually pretty easy to do. Let's switch back over to the JavaScript and we have a clear selections uh, function. Let's go ahead and implement that. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is take a look at the selected rows. So we'll say rows equals get selected rows. And then we're going to open up a for loop here as well. Now this one is different than what we normally wanna do. What I wanna do is start off, it's basically a backwards loop. I'm gonna start off with my, uh, my looping variable being rows dot get length. And then I'm going to evaluate as long as I is less than or equal to zero. And then with one in each one of my increments, I will decrement the value of I. Now the reason I'm doing this backwards is because when we start interacting with the, the rows here, so I'm going to say rows, remove rows dot get item and passing in the index. So because we're doing it this way, there's a good chance that the index that you're looking for would be readjusted. And so since you're going backwards, everything lines up as needed. Uh, if you try doing this with a forward loop, you're gonna get some errors because the, the array gets adjusted because you're calling a remove. So doing it backwards takes it off from the bottom or top of the stack, depending on how you look at it, and does it correctly. So that's why we're doing it that way. And then what we're gonna do is call that function that we created before called clear selected IDs. And then that way we've visually uh, cleared all the selections, but also with as far as the, the state that we're maintaining, we've cleared that as well. So let's try this and see how it looks. So let's select a number of these rows and call clear and they should all be uh, deselected. Excellent. Okay, so we have one left. We have uh, select all. And the way select all will work is we're gonna get all the selected rows and then we're going to get our instance of all of the rows on the grid. And then what we'll do from there is add to the selected rows collection each one of the rows. So you, you'll see it here in a second. So let's create uh, selected rows. Now there's a good chance that there could be no selected rows on the grid, but this is giving us an instance of the selected rows collection from the client side object model. From there, what we wanna do is get all of the rows. So we'll do get grid dot get rows. And this gives us a collection of all of the rows. So now all we need to do is loop through all the rows and add them to the selected rows collection. So to do that, we'll do a uh, forward moving uh, loop this time. And then we're gonna say selected rows dot add and they'll say rows, get row, and we'll pass in the index. And now each one of the rows are selected. Okay, well, let's go ahead and run it. So we can select all with none selected, or let's say that we have uh, a few selected and do select all and all of them will be selected. When we hit submit, it will come back and you'll notice here in our array, we've got all 10 of them selected. So there you have it. That's uh, quite a bit of dealing with um, the client side object model in row selection. The big thing to remember is that when you want to select some rows programmatically on the client side, you have a selected rows collection that you want to add rows to. That's probably the, the biggest thing that people may miss. Well, thanks a lot for checking out this video. This is Craig Shoemaker. If you have any questions about what you've seen, please feel free to email me at cshoemaker at infragistics.com. If you have support questions, go ahead and send them over at infragistics.com slash get help. If you'd like to check out the documentation for any one of our controls, please head on over to infragistics.com slash docs. Thanks again for your time, and we'll be talking to you soon. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.